good. Yeah, I just want to like take it, take it. Welcome back. Got a lot of stuff done today already. Uh, this morning it was kind of raining off and on, clear and then rainy and then clear and then rainy and it was overcast and I thought this would be a perfect time to burn over here because the fire is not going to spread all over the place. And so I got a great big blazing fire going and I cleared enough space that I can finally plant some pumpkins. So I'm going to plant pumpkins around this area. You can actually see the side of the house now. This was all a big pile of brush right here. So this is open and we're going to do some planting. But for those of you that keep asking me, why don't I do hugel culture? Okay, hugel culture is cool, right? You make a big pile of sticks, you dig a trench, you make a big pile of sticks, logs, that sort of thing, you cover it up, it rots in the center, it soaks up water, and over time it deteriorates into soil, it becomes sort of a reservoir for moisture, you plant on top of it and you have this garden, a high mound garden. Sepp Holzer uses this method in Austria. So everybody keeps saying, why don't you do a hugel culture? Hugel culture is like permaculture magic, right? I mean, it's like hugel culture, hugel culture. First thing you learn, hugel culture. You know, um, no, I'm not going to do any hugel culture. It does not work in this situation for two reasons. The first reason I'm not doing hugel culture is that the ground is full of rocks and it's very hard. And if I was going to do hugel culture, it would take me. Uh, forever and ever and ever to make hugel culture beds. To dig enough clay and rock out of the ground to cover up a hugel culture mound would be absolutely an insane amount of work. It's not like I have a bobcat and we can just do like, yeah, permaculture weekend, man. We've got this guy with a bobcat. We're doing earthworks. We're spending $40,000 and we're gonna make, no. It doesn't make any sense. So no, I'm not making hugel cultures for that reason. The second reason is I don't own this property. If I owned this property and I saw an area that might work to make a trench and start piling it up and make a hugel culture mound, I would probably do it. I would do it as a test because I do all kinds of different gardening methods. And um, you know, if I own the land and it was going to mature and be a hugel culture mound that over time starts to rot down and become a really rich area of soil, I would reclaim it that way but I don't own this property and we're only probably gonna have it for about a year or so. So it makes no sense for me to do a long-term project like a hugel culture. For the same reason, I'm not gonna repair the house or build a deck or uh, you know, put in some swing sets in a swimming pool. It doesn't make any sense. So that's why I'm not doing a hugel culture. It doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna burn this stuff and get these thorny, nasty things out of the way, break ground and get a yield. All this ground is going to be stripped and cleared, this house is probably going to be demolished. Everything's gonna be cleared and turned into a typical, normal, boring, suburban looking house. All of that hard work I did to do any kind of gardening or anything is gonna to be totally gone when this property is built on. It'll probably be stripped with a tractor, you know? So we're not gonna worry about it, uh, but for now, we're going to put in short crops, things that are going to make us a yield. And I think one of the first rules of permaculture is obtain a yield. If I spent my time making hugel culture, I would never obtain a yield. So there's there's the reason I'm not doing it. It's not that it's a bad idea, it's just not gonna work in this situation. Now let's go do some stuff. So this uh, trellis ended up a little more interesting. Um, see, I, I had a plan for it, and uh, what I was just gonna do is make a couple of tripods on the ends, and then I was gonna run this middle piece across, and then I was gonna put strings down from that and kind of let them find the strings. But one of my neighbors came over and he's like, yeah, let's do this and that and the other thing, and it sort of ended up, um, Kind of an interesting mess of strings and stuff. It's it's very stable though, and it's going to work. And as you can see down here, the uh, the beans don't seem to mind. They're already. Uh, I came over this morning, and the beans are already climbing on it. So it's. Craig said it was uh, like the uh, the the rigging on an old ship. That sounds good. But if you rigged up a ship like this, I mean, my grandpa was a sailor. He'd kill me if he saw this mess. But it'll work for the beans. It's just a, a, um, 
it's not Pinterest worthy, that's for sure, but it's stable. Yeah. Looks like I created a lizard trap here. Now the best thing to do would be to stick a stick. Come here. Here you go. The compost pile is a lizard trap. Go ahead. There you go. There are three in here. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm sorry. There you go. That'll let them out next time. This is the edible Dioscoria bulbifera, which you've seen before. And I planted one of the pieces uh, that broke off of here. One of the little vines broke off and had a little knob on it. And I thought, well, I'm gonna plant that right here next to this little piece of trellis out of the refrigerator garden. But I just discovered that that rotted and died. So I went and looked for this and I couldn't find it. I couldn't figure out where I put it because I kept moving things around while we were clearing and everything and I set it down. So I offered all the kids uh, two bucks to any kid that found it, and then Rachel found it, so I owe her two dollars. But look down here. You see here, this is the piece of vine that was sticking out of the ground that I thought would grow, and it simply rotted. So uh, here's my last chance. This is the last one of these bull bills that I have. So I am gonna just lightly cover it, because it looks like it wants to kinda grab into the ground. I'm gonna lightly cover it there. Father, please let this little yam grow. Amen. That's what you have to do if you only have one left. And then hopefully it grows. We'll see. I'm a Calvinist, so it may not be foreordained to grow. But we, we ask anyways. Gardening methods, we've uh, shown you everything but the kitchen sink. I figure it's about time. my perennial cucumber right there oh yeah well wow, that's the way we do it that's the way we do it on the YouTube yes sir see how little actual soil I had to use cheap cheap cheap
things that were even. People will stop watching me on YouTube. I'm very concerned about what people think. Obviously. I was thinking of uh, busting holes and planting pumpkins today because I've been waiting to plant pumpkins for a really long time. But uh, there's still a lot of trash here and I'd like to get all the trash gone. There's all kinds of corroded metal and jars and plastic and old broken buckets and just there's just trash like just all over the place. So I'm gonna just clean trash up today. I don't wanna plant pumpkins until I've got a nice clear area with no more junk in it. I am gonna leave some of the organic matter here so it's gonna look a little rough, but that's fine because it'll cover the soil and rot over the season. But all the plastic and bits of pressure treated rotten wood and whatever, you know, tin cans, that's, that's all gotta go away. So I'm gonna clear that out and then probably tomorrow we'll have this area nice and polished up and ready to plant seminal pumpkins in all the way from my home state of Florida representing. Thanks for joining me. Catch you all next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green. <laughs>